drawing translations in the coordinate plane, we're at 9.2b, which means we have three previous videos for Chapter 9 that are in the description in the Geometry Playlist if you need them. We now know that a translation is a transformation along a vector such that each segment joining a point and its image has the same length as the vector and is parallel to the vector. We learned that in the previous video, 9.2a. We also learned in video 8.6a and 8.6b that a vector in the coordinate plane can be written as AB, where A is the horizontal change and B is the vertical change from the initial point to the terminal point. So our A is our horizontal change, that's going to be our run, and the B is going to be our vertical change, that's our rise, and they're in these angle brackets. And for our vector, this would be the initial point where it starts, and this would be the terminal point, and that could be called the tail, and that could be called the tip or the head, okay? For translations in the coordinate plane, a horizontal translation is along vector A0, because we're going to have a horizontal change, but not a vertical one. So the value of the horizontal change is going to be the A, and our vertical change is going to be a 0, because it's only a horizontal translation. So, if we look at our diagram, we'll see our pre-image P is at 2, 3, and there's going to be a horizontal change of 5, so A is going to equal 5, and for P prime, what we do is we add the 5 to the 2, and our 3 has a 0 added to it, so it stays 3 for the Y value, see? So for P prime, we use X plus A and Y. And if our vector is 5, our a equals 5, then for our pre-image p, we've got 2, 3. Then for our p prime, we're going to have 2 plus 5, 3, or it's going to be at 7, 3. See? A vertical translation is along vector 0, b. So now there's going to be a vertical change, whatever the value of b is, and our horizontal is going to stay the same because we're adding a 0. So for p prime, we use x whatever that value is, and then y plus b. So if you look at the diagram, we've got our pre-image down here, p is at a 3, negative 4, and p prime, the b value has an 8. It's equal to 8. That's going to be our vector. So p prime is going to be at 3, and then negative 4 plus that 8. So p prime is going to be at 3, 4, because negative 4 plus 8 is a 4, so our y value is a 4, see? A general translation along vector AB, now there is going to be a horizontal and vertical change. So there's going to be values for A and B. So if you look at this diagram, we don't have a vertical vector or a horizontal vector, it's going on a slant, on a slope, isn't it? So our P is at negative 4, 2, and P prime is going to be at negative 4 plus 6, and we're going to have a 2 plus 3 for our y value, because if the magnitude for vector P, P prime is a 6, 3, then we would add a 6 to the A value and a 3 to the B value, see? And our preimage P at negative 4, 2 is then going to go to P prime at a negative 4 plus 6 and a 2 plus 3. So we add these values. So it'll be at a 2, 5. Now if you're really confused about the vectors and the magnitudes and adding them, you need to go watch 8.6a and 8.6b, otherwise you're just going to get really confused, okay? Because we're going to keep talking about this. And we can draw translations in the coordinate plane. We can translate the triangle with vertices a, b, c along the vector 2, 4. So we've got our coordinates for A as a negative 2, 4. If we add 2, 4 to it, we're going to have negative 2 plus 2 and negative 4 plus 4. That means A prime is going to be at 0, 0. It's going to be at the origin. B is at negative 1, negative 2. If we add 2, 4 to it, it's going to be at negative 1 plus 2 and negative 2 plus 4. So B prime is going to be at a 1, 2. It's going to be right there. And C is at negative 3, 0. If we add this 2, 4 to it, we're going to have negative 3 plus 2 and 0 plus 4. So C prime is going to be at negative 1, 4. Okay? Now we can graph the preimage and the image, and we have these two triangles. 
this is the pre-image, and it translated to here as the image. See? In a marching band drill, it takes eight steps to march five yards. So a drummer starts at a point eight steps to the left and eight steps up from the center of the field. So if the center of the field is the origin, the drummer starts eight to the left and eight up, it's going to be at negative eight eight where he starts or she starts, okay? And the drummer marches 16 steps to the right. So we're going to go 16 units to the right to a second position, and that would be eight eight then marches 24 steps down the field to a final position down here. That would be at 8, negative 16. So what's the drummer's final position? Well, it would be this 8, negative 16. And what single translation vector moved the drummer from their starting position to the final position? That would be the hypotenuse of this triangle, wouldn't it? We want a single vector that goes from the starting position to this position down here where they ended up. So we're going to let this blue D be the drummer's starting position, that's right here, and D prime is going to be that second position after the 16 steps, and D double prime is going to be where they finally ended up. So we start at negative 8, 8, we march 16 steps to the right, so we're going to add 16 to the negative 8 for our horizontal change, and that's going to put us at 8, 8. Then the drummer marches 24 steps down. So from 8-8, eight, eight, we're going to do a minus 24 for the vertical change. So we're going to be at 8, negative 16. So that's the final place. And they also wanted to know what single translation vector moved the drummer from the starting position to the final position, what that hypotenuse was. So if you look here, We've got a horizontal change of 16, and y is a 0. There's no vertical change. Here, there's no horizontal change, but there's a negative 24 vertical change, isn't there? So 16, 0 plus 0, negative 24 is going to give us 16, negative 24 for our vector. Okay? If you're really confused about vector addition, you need to see 8.6b. Okay? 8.6a. We talked about vectors and vector addition. All right? Now I've got one more thing I want to talk to you about. I don't want you to confuse the B in this AB inside the angle brackets with the B in the slope-intercept form of an equation, okay? So here's the slope-intercept form of an equation, right? And it's got a B in it. Well, the B in this AB in the angle brackets is for the vertical change of a vector. So this vector would have a vertical change of 3 and a horizontal change of 3, wouldn't it? It's going up 3. The B in this YMX plus B is the place where the line crosses the Y axis. Okay, so there's a difference. I don't want you to confuse these. They're two completely different things, okay? Our next lesson is transformations of functions. We're going to do 9.2C. It's the last part of lesson 9.2 before we go on to rotations in lesson 9.3. All right? Okay, so here's the entire board, and I hope this was helpful, and I hope I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.